What is up guys? Welcome to today's One Minute Clinic. And before we get started guys, remember if you want your questions answered and turned into a One Minute Clinic like today, comment your questions down below. I add them to the list and I get to every single one. Just like today. Today's question comes from Mark Gaber or Gabor. You tell me. When I think of low balls, they get me in trouble. I think of times when my opponent hits short or miss hits off of a good serve or deep ground strokes. If I don't read the short ball in time, I have to pick up the ball well inside the baseline and that can give me some trouble sometimes. Any tips to deal with short balls you have to scramble for, i.e. not taking the ball on the rise? Good question. I have not covered this one. I've covered a bunch of different ways to handle short balls, but the one that you have to kind of scramble for that actually is a unique situation. So let's get one minute on the clock. I'm actually gonna just give you guys the bullet points and the most important things today, and let's get started with today's video. So looking at the court on the far end, we have essentially four different corners that we can use. We can use the baseline corners on the ad side and do side, close to the singles line, and we can use the service box corners near the net. Anything other than those targets are gonna usually get us in trouble. Now, what we choose is gonna be dependent on how high the ball is when we receive it or when we get there and where we are on the court when we get there. So one rule of thumb, if you're playing singles, and I'm, there's gonna be a little bit of a switch for doubles, if you're playing singles, you're never gonna wanna go with the deep cross court ball on the scramble. The reason why that is, is that leaves a lot of open space for your opponent to punish you because you're Momentum is falling forward, you're falling to the side in some cases, and it's tough to get your bearings and get reset. So if I was to run up here and flick a ball cross court, that leaves all this room over to the side while I'm still falling this way, and they're able to pass me before I can get myself recomposed. When you're playing doubles, it's gonna be dependent on what the court orientation is. What I mean is, if we're playing doubles and I'm the baseliner, and I'm going cross court back and forth, baseline and baseline, and they miss hit that ball. If I can get there and it's comfortable enough, I wanna try and keep it off to the cross court. That way I'm still keeping that baseliner neutral. But in singles, we're gonna to wanna to push that ball down the line. That's the tactical choice. So never deep cross if the ball is low and we're under that pressure. We're gonna either go down the line deep, angle, or right in front of a short. Now here's a technical part on how to do those shots. So looking at this from a technical aspect, what we're gonna have to really be comfortable with in this situation is a continental grip. Most of the time when we're scrambling and stretching, we're not gonna have the time nor the ability to really get a good swing behind the shot. So we're gonna be reaching, controlling the contact, and kind of just pushing the ball to the targets that we're gonna use. And in other scenarios, we're gonna need to be able to carve the ball a little bit. So when we're going for the shorter ones, we're gonna be working more of the racket face manipulation. And when we're going for the deeper ones, we're gonna hold the racket more of a flat contact and just push it towards our target. I have the ball coming in right around here. And if that ball was to come to me and I'm barely getting here, most of the time the goal is just gonna to be to control the hands and just get it into my next spot. If I'm running and barely getting there, if I tried to swing at it, that's what's gonna cause the trouble. So I'm gonna run in control my hands and probably hit a drop shot back or flatten it out and push it back. Depending on the height that the ball is when I get here, what's gonna end up happening next is you need to decide where your target's gonna be. That's gonna be dependent on your opponent. If your opponent is blocking your path, let's say they hit the drop shot or they hit the shank short ball and they're in front of me, I'm going to need to fade that angle off to the side and I'm gonna to have to work the hands a little bit, not try to take the racket straight across. So as I run, I'm just gonna keep my racket face pointed where I want the ball to go, and then just push it to the side. I'm gonna shift the angle so that you guys can see how that looks. So as I'd be moving into the contact, it would just be controlling my racket face in that direction. Strings point that way, not taking it over with a big motion, but just running in and controlling the hands. Now I'm not showing you the sprint part, but it's literally just angle the racket face and finesse the hand just a little bit. If I wasn't doing that one, I'd end up dropping it back in front of me. That would be if my opponent hit that short ball from the other side of the court. 
in which case I'd have two options, which would be drop it in front of myself if they're staying back or pushing the ball deep if they are off to one side of the court and I'm just trying to keep myself in a neutral position. The other reason why you wanna make sure that you push it deep and in front of you is again, if they try to pass you, you are covering the angles easier and you don't have to jump to the other side of the court. So now the one thing I didn't really talk about was the actual run itself. If you're scrambling forward, one mistake people make is actually running and having the racket do a lot of movement. When you're running and stretching for a ball, you're gonna to wanna to keep that racket already out in front so that you don't make the bad habit of moving your racket through your run. Reason why that's important to understand is if you're running full speed, whether you think you are or not, the racket is moving and bringing that body momentum with you. So if you run really fast and then try to control a big swing, you're gonna end up overhitting it. Letting your legs do most of the racket work and then just directing the racket face to where you need the ball to go, it's gonna be super important in terms of maintaining control. At most, at the end, you're gonna take one big stretching step out, depending on what your targets are. Most times, cross court or the drop shot, you're going to end up with your right leg out if you're right-handed, because then you can finesse the hand, whereas if you cross your legs, it becomes very difficult to go the other way. And if you wanna go down the line, you can kind of do it from either foot. So one last demonstration of all the shots, and then same thing on the backhand side. You're just gonna be running, stretching the hand out. You're probably gonna use your right leg for this one, because again, you can manipulate the hand a little bit better. Going left foot out can sometimes be uncomfortable for most people, but you can get the cross court angles pretty easily. So now putting it all together with the run, I would be running out. My hands would already be fully stretched and I'd just be going, control the hand and then resetting. Running all the way in, drop the land right there. Running all the way in, pushing the ball deep and in front of me. The worst thing you can do is try to run and then slow your swing down on the move. As I said before, it's gonna be coming in controlling the hands and letting your last big step do the work. But that's gonna wrap up today's video, guys. Don't forget, running and scrambling to get short balls is not ever going to be a comfortable situation, but you can make it as comfortable as possible by just controlling the things that are in your control, such as controlling how big your swing is gonna be, picking smart targets. When you're running forward, making sure that your body's nice and stable. Stretch out using only one step. Don't fall through the shot unless absolutely necessary. When you're picking these targets, it's always gonna be based off of where your opponent is. And again, whether you're playing singles or doubles, when you use these shots, like, try to make sure that you stay composed after you hit the shot, because in most cases, you're gonna be at the net and you're gonna to have to deal with a second shot if they manage to get the shot back. This is going to be something that you have to practice outside of match play in order to actually get a good feel for it and then put it back into your normal singles or double situations. But that's gonna wrap up today's video. If you know anybody who would benefit from it, please send it off to them. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in our next one minute clinic.